A 420-meter steel tube sits hidden on the outskirts of Veendam, not much longer than a city block, yet designed to send capsules faster than the jets overhead. It's called the European Hyperloop Center, and as of mid-2025, it's fully operational. Real steel, real tech, not just a digital fantasy. Governments are searching for a way to slash emissions and travel times before climate deadlines hit, and this track promises to leap ahead of high-speed rail, maybe even airplanes. But here's the catch. Can a half-kilometer test tunnel in Northern Europe be the first real step toward you flying across Europe in a tube instead of a plane? The answer could upend everything about how we move and who gets left behind if it works. In 2023, the European Hyperloop Center in Veendam made an announcement that broke from a decade of speculation and glossy concept art. For years, Hyperloop lived in white papers and tech conferences, grand promises of 1,000 km per hour capsules, but little to show beyond digital renderings and PowerPoint slides. Then, Rotterdam-based Hart Hyperloop secured the funding and partnerships to build Europe's first permanent full-scale test track. This wasn't just another simulation. Steel was ordered from Tata Steel and Pasco, Modular tubes were fabricated off-site, and a 420-meter line began to take shape on the edge of a Dutch logistics hub. The decision to build in Veendam wasn't just about geography. It was a statement, a pivot from endless theorizing to live, physical testing. Investors and regional government lined up behind the project, drawn by the promise of a working prototype that could attract international attention and future contracts. The European Union backed the venture with innovation grants, while local authorities saw a chance to put their town on the map as a center for next-generation mobility. With 34 prefabricated steel sections, each 2.5 meters in diameter, the track was designed not just for speed, but for critical maneuvers like lane switching, something essential for any future network. By 2023, the Hyperloop conversation in Europe had shifted no longer just about what might be possible, but about what could be proven on the ground. The Veendam facility became the testing ground that the Hyperloop world had been waiting for. By mid-2025, the Veendam Hyperloop facility crossed a threshold that few projects in this field have reached. It became fully operational. 34 steel tube segments, each 2.5 meters in diameter, were craned into position and joined with precision seals forming a seamless, pressurizable line stretching 420 meters across the HUSA logistics site. The modular build logic paid off. Every section was fabricated off-site, delivered just in time, and assembled in sequence, reducing delays and keeping tolerances tight enough for vacuum operation. For the engineers and partners behind the project, this wasn't just proof of construction skill. It was a statement of readiness. The track now stood as a functional testbed, not a model or a simulation. Vacuum pumps, maglev rails, and control systems were all integrated in live. The site's unique lane switching segment, engineered for dynamic routing, was locked in at the terminal end, awaiting the next phase of testing. With the hardware foundation in place, the Veendam facility was no longer a collection of parts or a promise on paper. It was a working hyperloop system, ready for vehicle runs, subsystem validation, and the critical experiments that would define the next era of high-speed ground transport. The move from assembly to operation meant that Europe's Hyperloop ambitions now had a tangible, testable platform, one that could finally deliver real-world data and set the stage for the technology's most important trials yet. Inside the control room, every monitor flickered with live data. Engineers tracked pressure, maglev current, and vehicle telemetry. The target? A clean lane switch at 85 km per hour, under 1 millibar of pressure. Tim Howder, eyes locked on the feed, waited for the all clear. Just minutes before launch, a sensor flagged a misalignment in the lane switch actuator. The feed froze. For 10 tense minutes, the team pored over diagnostics, recalibrating the sensor array and confirming vacuum integrity. No one spoke above a whisper. The pod, magnetically levitated and loaded with test weights, stood ready at the entrance. Finally, with the fault cleared, Howder gave the nod. The maglev hum built, the pod accelerated, first a low whine, 
then a smooth rush as it hit 85 km per hour. At the switch, the actuator triggered. Data spiked, but the pod glided through the fork, seamlessly tracking the new line. The pressure held steady at 1 millibar. In the observation gallery, a ripple of cheers broke the silence. Engineers exhaled, some with fists clenched in relief. The telemetry confirmed it. Switch completed, no deviation, no vacuum loss. This wasn't just a test run. It was proof that maglev lane switching could work at speed inside a real vacuum tube. For Howder and his team, years of simulation and design came down to these seconds. The world's first live at-speed Hyperloop lane switch had just succeeded in a Dutch logistics park. The control room erupted. This was the moment they'd waited for. A Hyperloop capsule glides silently through the tube, weightless on a cushion of magnetism. There's no engine roar, no vibration, just a sense of smooth, effortless motion. For Mars Goose, Heart Hyperloop's co-founder, this is more than a technical feat. It's a new kind of mobility. The promise is radical. City-to-city -city travel at speeds rivaling jets, but with a fraction of the energy use. Developers claim that at full scale, a Hyperloop could be up to 10 times more energy efficient than airplanes or cars. The secret lies in the near vacuum environment. Air resistance drops to almost nothing, so the capsule requires only a gentle push to maintain speed. Magnetic levitation eliminates wheel friction entirely. Electricity powers everything, and if supplied by renewables, the emissions footprint shrinks even further. Imagine boarding in Amsterdam and stepping out in Paris less than an hour later, having used less energy than a family car trip. The experience isn't just about speed. Passengers are sealed in a pressurized pod, protected from outside noise and weather. Acceleration is gentle, designed for comfort, and the ride is nearly silent. There's no turbulence, no sudden stops. For Goose, the goal is to make distance irrelevant, to connect cities as if they were neighborhoods, while slashing the energy bill for every journey. The Vindam track is a miniature, but every successful test brings the vision closer. A network where travel is not just fast and clean, but so efficient that it challenges the logic of flying. The technology isn't just about beating the clock, it's about redefining what's possible for people and the planet. To reach airplane speeds, a Hyperloop line needs more than a short test tube. It demands tens of kilometers laid arrow straight, with almost no room for error. At 900 kilometers per hour, comfortable acceleration alone takes over 15 kilometers. Dr. Anders Johansson from TU Delft puts it bluntly, the physics are sound, but the economics are brutal. For every meter added, the cost and complexity multiply. Safety isn't just about keeping the pot on track. It's about guaranteeing passenger comfort in a sealed, pressurized capsule and having emergency exits every few hundred meters. Even a minor pressure drop could trigger a full system halt. Environmental reviews raise more questions. Can hundreds of kilometers of steel tube cross farmland, wetlands, or cities without major opposition? The Vindam track proves what's possible in miniature, but scaling up means confronting a whole new set of hurdles. Funding for Hyperloop has always been fragile. After early startup pivots and high-profile stalls, all eyes turn to Brussels. Commissioner Adina Valian called Hyperloop a test of Europe's innovation resolve, but warned that public money would follow only if real progress is made. The 2026 10T review will decide whether Hyperloop corridors join the continent's official transport grid. Meanwhile, Spain's Zaragoza is preparing a rival test line for 2027, raising the stakes for Vindam's future. In September 2025, Heart Hyperloop's team achieved an 85 km per hour magnetic lane switch on the 420-meter track at the European Hyperloop Center in Vindam, an operational milestone backed by 34 prefabricated steel sections and a controlled 1 millibar vacuum. This test confirmed the core technology can work under real conditions and the claim that Hyperloop could be up to 10 times more energy efficient than airplanes is supported by EU research documents. 
Yet, the track's limited length and current speeds highlight how far the system remains from challenging aircraft over real distances. Key questions persist. Will it scale to tens of kilometers? Can costs and safety standards meet public and regulatory expectations? With the next EU transport review scheduled for 2026 and the first full-scale pilot in Zaragoza not due before 2027, Veyendam stands as a clear proof of progress, but its future as a transport revolution remains uncertain. The evidence shows a working foundation. Whether it becomes a mainstay or a historical footnote depends on what comes next.